prior to doing any work with the um, with the CTD, what you need to do is you need to attach the uh, various cables to the computer. The first the first one you want to attach is the uh, CTD serial port, and this goes into the uh, back of the computer into the COM port one. Uh, if you grab a screwdriver, that will firmly um, hold the serial port in the back of the computer. After you have um, fixed the CTE cable, uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to grab the uh, serial to USB converter that carries the navigation data. Um, if you take this and put this into one of the USB ports, um, the computer can then uh, read the navigation data from the GPS unit. Uh, the best thing is to put it into the same USB port every time. After you've connected the uh, cables to the computer, the, the next thing to do is to uh, turn on the SPE28 control box. Uh, this brings the data from the CTD uh, through to the computer. And then if you're using the rosette, you want to uh, turn on the rosette controller box and turn the dial on the rosette control box um, to the same number uh, as the bevel on the actual rosette itself. Many computers today come without uh, COM ports and you need to use a serial to a USB converter to be able to, to connect some instruments uh, to the computer. So today what I'm going to show you is how to find out the uh, COM port number that is issued to the, to the converter by the computer. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come down to the start and in the search area you want to type in um, DEV to try and find the, the device manager. Once you found the device manager, you start it, and if you come down to the uh, to the ports tab uh, down the bottom here, um, and have a look down here, you can see that in this case we have a prolific USB USB to serial um, converter, and it has been issued uh, the number for the COM port two. So if you want to, um, uh, for instance, with Seabird, uh, you would need to use COM port two. Um, to uh, find the navigation data. So now that uh, everything is correctly set up, we can start collecting uh, some data. Uh, to do this, we need to st uh, start some software called CSAVE V7. To do this, uh, click on the start button and uh, here, here just select the CSAVE V7 and this will start the software. So after the um, software started, the first thing you want to do is you want to uh, configure the program to make sure that it's um, that it's working with the uh, the requirements for the CTD you're using. So to do this, the first thing you do is you come up and you go to configure inputs. And uh, today we get, we're going to be using the the university's SPE25. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're using the correct configuration file. The configuration file we have here at the moment is for uh, one of the, one of our SPE 19s. So what we need to do is we need to change that um, to make sure that we're using the SPE 25 configuration file. To do that, we uh, come up to open, and there's a folder on the, on the uh, CTD computer that has uh, all the configuration files in it. Um, so today we're going to be, as I say, using the SPE 25. And we're going to be using the SB25 um, with the navigation option. So what this allows us to do is this, uh, this allows us to record navigation data in the, um, in the header and also in the file uh, of the um, computer, of the file that's saved onto the computer. Um, so we'll, we'll select that one and we'll uh, go open. And you can see here that this has now changed the... Um, uh, the configuration file to the um, to that for the SPE25. After we've done that, we need to come across the serial ports, and we just need to make sure that the um, that the settings in here are correct for the CTD we're using. So the uh, CTD data is coming into COM port one, 
but the baud rate for the um, for the SBE25 is set at 4800, so we need to change that. If you left it set at 600, the CTD and the computer would be unable to, to communicate. Um, the SBE19s we have uh, both have uh, board rates of 600. Uh, these next two you don't have to worry about um, because because we're we're recording um, the navigation data. Uh, we need to uh, make sure that this is set up correctly as well. The NMEA serial port is set up correctly. Um, as we found out a little bit earlier, um, with the uh, searching the serial to USB uh, conversion on the device manager, uh, on this computer it's set to COM2, so that, that's okay, and the board rate is set to 9600. So both of those are fine. So now that we've done that, we can select OK. So now that we've um, checked the settings, we can start to collect the data. So what you do then is you come up to real-time data, um, you select start, and here you select uh, your file names. Typically with this, we would use um, the cruise number, the ship number, um, site ID. Um, because we're just doing a dummy file today, we'll just use um, this, um, this dummy name here. Um, and we select where we want to save it to. So this, I just have a folder here set, set up for the TCTD data. So we'll just um, we'll just use that. Yeah, and we'll just overwrite that. So now that we've done that, um, we're ready to start. So we select start, and we'll overwrite our old file. And here you can put in the cruise ID and uh, vessel ID and, and and the site ID and any notes you want. Um, and this will come up on the header. Of the uh, of the hex file, uh, we won't worry about that today. Um, so now that we've done that, we select OK. So what it's doing now is trying to find the navigation data. It's found that. So now that it's found the navigation data, we can um, get the CTD turned on. Once the CTD is turned on, um, that, um, that box will go away and you'll start to see a flashing yellow light um, on the SBE28 box um, and that tells you that data is coming in and we'll also get some um, data on the screen here like we have. Um, so here we have um, the depth because the CTD is sitting on the deck, it's, um, it's a negative. Um, we have the temperature, salinity here. Um, the oxygen in milliliters per litre, oxygen in uh, percent, and this is the value that we're getting for the, for the fluorescence. Um, typically when you've uh, got this um, data coming up, what you do is you then put the CTD into the water, um, and you would leave it sitting there for um, at least a, probably a couple of minutes to allow the, the CTD to equilibrate, um, and the readings to to normalize um, we're not people we're not going to be putting it in the water today so we uh, we won't worry about that now often when we're doing CTD work on the Polaris with the rosette we'll also be collecting uh, water samples um, and when you fire the uh, rosette what that does is that interrupts the signal so I just want to give you an example of what happens when we do that so now we'll fire the fire the rosette and there'll be a bit of a delay and you'll see that the data stops and then the dial flicks around to the to the next one and the data then starts up again so if we just do that again Sometimes what you'll see here also is that the um, the little, little box come up saying that the signal has been interrupted just um, um, after you've gone through the process of firing the rosette. Just click OK and the data will start clicking again. So once you've uh, finished your cast and the CTD is back on the deck, uh, go back up to um, real time data and uh, select stop to stop the CTD collecting the data. Uh, also get someone who's on the deck to turn the CTD off. 
uh, so the batteries on the uh, CTD don't go flat. Um, so that's all for today. Um, thanks very much. Uh, have a good day.